it's 3rd November, 1889. This is Globe City, Arizona Territory. The town's in shock. Sheriff Glenn Reynolds has been murdered, along with Hunky Dory Holmes. The Apache Kid has escaped, along with the Apache prisoners, en route by stage to Florence and Casa Grande, and then on to Yuma Territorial Prison. We've mounted a posse. We're almost ready to leave. So if you'd like, you're here. Uh, you could join us. Uh, if you would, that would be greatly helpful. So uh, we're ready to go. Grab your gear, mount up, and, uh, and join us. In 1886, the threat of Geronimo had ended with his surrender. For a moment, the people of Globe District breathed a sigh of relief, thinking their troubles with the Apaches were solved. But it wasn't. Sheriff Glenn Reynolds was tasked with eliminating the immediate Apache threat. And as he accepted the task, it cost him his life and the life of others. This was a perilous task over very rough country, some still remote today. Sheriff Reynolds had refused the help of both the Army and of Chief of Scouts, Al Sieber. Deputy Tom Horn was off at a rodeo, so Deputy W.A. Hunky Dory Holmes and Sheriff Reynolds would make the trip. Sheriff Glenn Reynolds and Deputy Hunky Dory Holmes had a different view of their surroundings and only hours before they passed into legend and the history of the Old West. At their point in time, Riverside Station on the Gila River was their stop for the night on the other side of the Pinals on the Florence Kelvin Highway stage route on the way to Casa Grande and the train to Yuma and the territorial prison. So their transport of prisoners from the San Carlos, from Globe, was quite an auspicious group, a very dangerous group. Among their charge, the Apache Kid, one time scout to Al Sieber and now prisoner. In a few hours, not long after sunrise, and five miles to the southwest, Sheriff Reynolds, along with Deputy Holmes, will lay dead in the middle of the stage road, just above Ripsy Wash. And stage driver Eugene Middleton, not far distant, wounded and near death. The Mexican prisoner, Avat, will be on the way to Florence for help, and the Apache Kid, along with the other Apache prisoners, will be once again, free. The smoky atmosphere, illuminated by the burning wicks of oil lamps and firelight, the stale smell of tobacco and whiskey, and the damp of the evening, this space was filled with the most dangerous of prisoners and the kid. For that day and place and time, the sheriff and deputy were fairly well armed. 45 Colt single action revolvers, a double-barreled shotgun and a Winchester, either in 1873 or an 1886 rifle. Gene Middleton had a Colt revolver. Not a lot of firepower or coverage for so many and so few to watch them. For the long night, the prisoners were shackled together on a bench and would sleep sitting upright. When the conversations ended, it was time for sleep but little for Reynolds or Holmes, taking turns at watch and guard. The morning came early, well before dawn, with little sleep for anyone. The morning came quietly, and the night, not much sleep. In the early morning first light, the team of horses were hitched and the prisoners loaded for the long run to Casa Grande, and then by train to the end of the line at Yuma Territorial Prison. Headed out in the heavy hall to Ripsy Wash. Headed out against the cold rain and snow of the 2nd of November. In five miles, two would be dead, one wounded. And out of this group, only three would live out their lives. Middleton, Avat, the Mexican prisoner, and the Apache kid. All other prisoners would be shot, hung, and or captured 
The stage rambled out into the chill of early morning and into the disappearing shadows of an approaching morning sunrise. At that point, let us turn back to the day before, yesterday, if you will, and the Globe Arizona Territory, and for a moment look into the whys of the death of Sheriff Glenn Reynolds and Deputy Home. Mistakes in those days could be costly, deadly. In 1889, on the edge of the frontier, there was Arizona Territory. There was great wealth, but with that, there was great hardship and violence. Reynolds was a good sheriff, a family man, but from what is published and in written accounts, he underestimated many things, and this would cost him his life, his deputy's life, and set the territory ablaze with men on a mission, not only to escape and evade capture, but to also be found and recaptured. In 1888, Al Sabre entreated upon me to round up these Apache renegades. By October of 1889, all were in custody, even the Apache kid. I had my deputy, William Hunky Dory Holmes, and my good friend, Gene Middleton, to drive the stage. Brand new Concord with green and yellow wheels. So, on the 1st of November, 1889, we left Globe, first light towards Pioneer Pass, Riverside Station. We made Riverside on the other side of the Gila by dark. It was a short night, up by 4 a.m., breakfast, and away by 5. Five miles to Kelvin Gray, Gripsy Walk. Upon our arrival, all but two were ordered to get down. The Apache Kid and Haas Kalti. The steep grade, deep sandy wash, we were all told to walk so the stage could move up the grade. First was a Mexican prisoner, Jesus Avat, then myself, and three behind. Then three more, and my deputy at drag. It was so cold, drizzle rain and snow, our heavy coats buttoned tight in the storm. Gloves as well. Then it happened. My deputy was beset by three, driven to the ground, shot through the heart with his own Winchester rifle. He was dead before he hit the ground. Then the other three set up on me, drove me to the ground, and I was shot with my deputy's Winchester. As I fell, I was shot point blank, both barrels with buckshot, into my face. I died instantly. To make damn sure, they crushed my skull with a rock. When that deed was done, they shot Gene Middleton in from the box at the stage and left him dead where he fell. Out of all in the party, only three survived. The kid, who remains at large, his whereabouts unknown. Jesus Savat, who avoided the bullets fired at him, made his way to Florence for help. He was later pardoned, pardoned by the governor. And Gene Middleton, badly wounded, made his way back to Riverside Station crawling in the rain and snow five miles. All the rest were captured, shot, or hung. I was only 35 years old, and left behind my wife, Gussie, and my four children. My name is Glenn Reynolds, Sheriff, Gila County, Arizona Territory. I came here some time back with my wife and four children from Albany, Texas, settled on the edge of the Sierra Anchas, ran cattle with the Ellisons. But with the Graham Tewksbury affray and the renegade Apaches, it became too dangerous to linger. So I moved my family to Globe. Maybe this would be a story from Sheriff Reynolds, maybe in his own words. 